Hello, Dr. Zakir with you. The topic is nasal masses. So, let me give a small introduction. So, this condition is mainly seen in those patients who have a wound anywhere in the body and there is pus discharge too. So, what happens is in these type of patients, the infected wound it will attract a special type of fly which is called a Chrysomia basinia. This fly it sits on the infected wound which is pouring out pus and it lays eggs. This egg will hatch to or metamorphose to larva which is called as maggot and this happens within one day 24 hours. And this maggot it secretes tissue destroying enzymes and this destroyed tissue all the tissues will be eaten up by the maggot. Whatever comes on its way it will eat it up. So, it destroys the part where it is being where it is there. It completely destroys. So, this life cycle only I have shown you in this diagram. So, this condition masses is nothing but infestation by a special uh, fly and it lays larvae which is of very destructive nature. It is usually seen in specific patients. Those patients who have a wound and there is pus discharge and these patients are being totally neglected and they are, these patients are not able to take care of themselves and there is no one to take care of them. These type of patients they get this condition. So, let it be atrophic rhinitis or maybe sinusitis, maybe ear discharge because of chronic otitis media or a malign or cancer patient in the sinus or maybe um, after the cancer treatment he is going undergoing radiotherapy whatever so the patient is being neglected the patient has not been able to take care of himself and there is no one to take care of the patient. In these type of patient you get this condition. So, the sites I have already mentioned and we are going to see mainly the nasal one and if suppose a patient is able to convey he says I feel that there is something inside the nose always and I get a tickling sensation or something is crawling inside the nose and there is nasal block too and on and off little blood stain uh, blood stain is there from the nose and on examination of the face of the patient the whole face is swollen up and even the eyelids everything will be swollen up and sometimes you see the maggot just comes out of the nose and goes back. On examination we have to use an endoscope when you put in an endoscope uh, nasal when you do a nasal endoscopy uh, we can see multiple maggots moving around. And one thing I would like to tell you it is very difficult to go even near the patient because it is a neglected patient and that wound part is uh, uh, smells very bad very small smelling and you feel so many maggots crawling around inside the nose. So, this and along with that when you have an initial endoscopy done we can see it eats up whatever comes on the way. So, the ne ne uh, septal uh, septum which is there in the nose inside the which separates the both nasal cavity that will be eaten up. So, there is there will be a hole that means a perforation there will be so many ulcerative ulcerations in the nasal mucosa and necrotic tissues. The complication is this maggots it destroys everything in the nose and from there it can go into the eye or it can even go into the brain. Now, coming to the treatment. So, this neglected patient has to be well taken care of. The first thing is we have to isolate them totally from others, give them, put them in an isolation room. Not only that, inside that isolation room also, the like how you see in this picture, we will have a net around. Why? Because as condition there is a wound, there is a pus discharge, more and more flies may get attracted. So, they will be totally in isolation and their general condition has to be improved. We will give multivitamin once daily, iron tablet once daily, balanced diet and also drink lot of water and maybe we will we'll, uh, continue with IV drips too and tetanus toxide of course. And they will be getting uh, injection um, uh, antibiotics maybe one or two antibiotics because we want to prevent secondary uh, bacterial infection too. And if there is pain, pain analgesics. Now, the main problem how are we going to remove the maggots? So, First we will pack the nasal cavity, we will put this special combination of chloroform and turpent, turpent and oil in the ratio of 1 is to 4 in a special cottonoid and we will place it inside the nose. What happens is when you keep this chloroform and turpent and oil, the maggots are find it, they get suffocated because of that and they try to crawl out and endoscopically we have to manually remove each 
maggots by the with the help of a faucets and and uh, put it in a box collect in a box either we can use chloroform or terpenoin oil or either and cocaine or ethylene chloride whichever is available i prefer the first one so all the collected maggots will be taken out and it has to be burnt and there are few results which shows that oral ivermectin is also good now when this condition well under control say after one or two weeks and all the maggots have been removed and good nutrition has been given the patient general condition has improved we have to take back the patient to the operation theater and all the necrotic nasal tissue has to be removed and first itself i have mentioned that the primary causative primary causative factor has to be well taken care of now the cause of death what happens is neglected patient when you have infection and secondary infection too it spreads inside the blood and uh, throughout the body and can lead in septicemia and take off the life of the patient likewise the infection from the nose can spread into the brain also it can cause in meningitis and other complications too so this is how nasal specific nasal myasis presents and that's how we manage thank you so much